The other remark is that basically all of us are fr free thinkers and when I was asked to speak here, I was thinking about just to give you small morsels, food for thought for the others. So my take on what historians can learn from uh, Honky. So let's ask him first if I can switch to Sun. So it's only a framework within which we can analysis Hungary's history, because in itself we are unable to understand Hungary's history. So you need a framework for it, and hopefully that would help us uh, to think, but if not, then forget about it. This is very typical what he says, the last sentence. So the greatest dynamism, uh, he shares his thought, but then he kind of steps back. So maybe it's not like that, that, but, that he added. Was he a historian? Before we move on with the answer, what we can learn, what historians can learn, but if you look at this, actually he was interested in one great transition, which is the 16th, 17th century England, the uh, civil war and uh, it's not by chance that together with Laszlo Markai who was very uh, knowledgeable uh, on the area he, they wrote uh, this excellent book uh, the England um, on the brink of the new era or new age and also uh, Hamlet uh, 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 which basically I think he was one of the dissertations for his candidacy yes so the issue of transition on the level of the individual, also on the level of society, this is what he was, uh, uh, was exploring. And then he realized that for that, you need to be more than just a literary historian. You need to be a sociologist and uh, much more. Many uh, actually criticized him for not being too empirical. and. His generalization, generalizations are not empirical enough, but I think he spent most of his life, a lot of his life, with collecting empirical uh, evidence. Uh, for example, in 78, 82, and 1990, he uh, provided a great uh, review of the Hungarian society and the value system uh, based on the Rokas uh, test. And that's when he came up with these schemes that, uh, for example, there's a traditional Christian, a Puritan, a cumula, uh, accumulator, and the consumer hedonist. And uh, this material was collected uh, uh, in a manuscript which was never published, and it was entitled Continuity and Disruption. Originally, he gave the manuscript to the Macbeth publishing uh, uh, house. It was 600 pages, but then he uh, asked it back and never gave it or returned it for publishing. Then uh, in 1989, there uh, was uh, Eastern European Alternatives, where he discusses usually the issue and problematics of elites. And that's already a work of a historian, because uh, Julia Foyd, Mihai Varga, uh, sharp criticism of these people who were unable to understand, for example, how there's a transition uh, of the communist elite to a new type of elite. But what he wrote about, actually, the uh, it had more reality uh, in, in that than other works of other sociologists. What can we learn from these works and his methods? Uh, very rich uh, in empirical work, also uh, great generalizations and very bold associations. For example, this is the uh, image where the goldfish wants to escape from one fishbowl to another. There's one second of freedom that, that he has. So that are uh, the images that he used. And this is so easy to remember. And historians, sadly, don't use uh, these images. 
also the dichotomies, the crises and the responses that, that he explored as well in great uh, depth, and the same thing, the scenarios and uh, contrasts. And now again, let's listen to one of his uh, other lectures. This is where we are at the moment, so between the two worlds. So that's the old system, which is then the rock on the left, and the other one is the right. We don't know what it's like, so that's where in the middle, we are in the middle. And we all characterized by uncertainty. So this is how we try to be and build ourselves as men, a free man. So clearly he identifies the problem, the uh, issue, and then he proceeds to discuss the routes, possible routes that he foresees. The method that we can learn from is basically is uh, the the primary thesis or topics uh, that they keep recurring, coming with the strength or the power of uh, musical motives. For example, uh, it's when we read uh, his work uh, and see one of the problems recurring, uh, it's something like uh, a motive from music recurring. So this is uh, a very good example of how to put your uh, uh, how to postulate uh, a concept and then uh, elaborate it later. And also, basically, uh, this is the cuvee of genres. He was very uh, boldly doing that, uh, just mixing and matching different genres, philosophical essays to empirical descriptions, etc. And what's very, very important that us, us historians can learn from, he's not writing for other historians. We can actually have a look at the index of his uh, scientific uh, citations. So the MTMT has 36 citations, and under 200, uh, you, you nobody. So that's not what he was about. But he paid great attention to the fact that uh, to his readers. Many historians, he overlooked that all they care about is being cited, and uh, that's what he uh, was different in. And uh, how we can uh, characterize him or classify him, I uh, think he was an Utwash type thinker. He was actually the, kind of the carnation from the uh, three generations and also a lot of uh, thoughts from Bibo uh, 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 recurring. And also he took upon himself uh, uh, to play a public role, but he was very uh, conscientious and a large uh, 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 scientist. And this is basically a poem by Orange. And this is what he uh, cited when he finished his last uh, presentation here in uh, Gersag. It is all about just his uh, basically sounding the uh, the bell, and it was didn't care if the.